Welcome to Adventure Dad. Today we're doing a video on our truck drawers. Some people call them gun drawers, some people call them overlanding drawers, gear drawers. To me, they're just lifestyle drawers. Over the years, I've had experience with a lot of different truck drawer ma manufacturers going back 25 years now at this point when I saw my first truck vault. Loved that. That truck vault, you know, for years I'd been around trucks, but you're constantly fairing your stuff in and out of the cab, trying to keep it dry. You know, now you have a topper, but then you have your dogs in here and all your stuff, and there's all this room up here, but you have all your little stuff, or you need your tools, or, you know, where's my water boiler? And it's, you know, shoved in that corner. First time I saw a truck vault, I loved it. I mean, I was just sold. And I've had some sort of truck drawer in every car I've had, one form or another, usually made out of scrap wood, look like crap, but work okay. Truck vaults and decked, I think they look really good. They go wall to wall. Man, they just it just looks good. It gives you that nice flat surface all the way across. A couple little hidey holes. What I don't like about them is all my wasted space. So I'm getting old. Uh, I like to carry a ladder wherever I go now because I got bad knees and hips. I'm able to carry my traction mats. Behind my traction mat is a shovel and a Pulaski. There might be an axe back there too. What I have over here is I have my, I have water. Always carry a little bit of water. I live in the desert. You never know. This water probably needs to be replaced, but we have it. High lift is on this truck is mounted above that wheel well. But with this drawer like this, I'm able to keep all that stuff off to the side where it's easy to get. The other thing is I can put all my camp chairs. So if I have wind doors, I can stuff camp chairs along the side. I don't know if you've, if you've been outside a long time, you know the camp chairs are just a pain in the butt. Like where do you keep them? You can actually get to them. So I really like this. I don't think this system necessarily looks quite as good as a deck or a truck vault that goes wall to wall. But as far as utility, this blows it away. I'm able to stuff all my stuff around the sides where I can get to it uh, based on order of priority. The less I need it, the further forward it goes. But then I still have my drawers for everything I'm using all the time. So that's why I like this setup. Since I'm about ready to get rid of these, I just wanted to show you where the idea came from. So I was looking at different, when I built these, I knew I didn't want to go with drawer slides. Once again, I said, this is all scrap. And I'm always experimenting with different types of plywood, different thicknesses. You know, this should probably be three quarter. I was playing with half inch at, at that time. I ended up having to cut my drawers a little bit low right here, because if you get too much weight on them, you can't open your drawers. So three quarter is real nice for the tops of these. So that's, that's what I'm going to the other thing is is when i was researching these i wanted to get away from those drawer slides big heavy locking drawer slides so i wanted to play with that hdpe plastic like cutting board plastic i found some at mcmaster car they'll sell you angled extrusions which would be really cool here on the corner however i couldn't figure out a way to actually affix it so i i found a company here in boise called centennial plastics and they sold me a four by eight sheet of skinny cutting board plastic. You'll have to excuse the mess here. And what I did is I couldn't figure out how to hold it in. So what I did is I just put it in the whole, the whole bottom here is all HDPE. It's a, like I said, it was a four by eight sheet. I cut it down. The center divider here clamps it in place. And then on the side, I actually put some little screws in to hold it. As you can see, they didn't, it didn't really work, uh, but it doesn't need that. These, these have worked really nicely. However, I have found, now I found uh, strips of adhesive back. Those are the ticket. So this was really just a prototype. Um, the other thing I played with on this one, and you can see I just kind of, this was not a finished product. I played with carpet. So both of these drawers have different variations of carpet. Turns out I don't like carpet in my drawer slides. I will not do carpet again. I played with, you know, wrapping it over the top, over the back, just in the bottom. It looks like crap and carpet upholstery is really, really hard. If you've never done upholstery, it's hard. I mean, I can't even wrap a present. So carpet was beyond me. Anyway, that's really what I wanted to show you was just this sheet of plastic right here was the start. So number one, it's hard to get a drawer slide that's six feet long. Pardon me, five feet long, 60 inches, more or less. Uh, the other thing is they take up a lot of room. Usually they're three quarters of an inch wide minimum. So they take up an inch and a half per drawer, three inches per set or per, per truck bed. But the other thing is, is they're really expensive. I mean, silly expensive for those sliders. But my big thing has always been space. I'm really, really, really worried about space. I've also looked at making drawers out of the skateboard bearings, 
outfeed table bearings. The problem with all of those is the amount of space you end up wasting just trying to get a little bit of storage in your truck. So what I found, what I did is I got rid of all that and just tried to slide it on a piece of plastic. First I tried my truck uh, drawers with no plastic, just wood on wood, didn't work real well. Once I put those boxes together with that sheet of plastic in there, worked really, really nice. But it wasn't the, you know, the most elegant solution. So after a lot of searching around, I found adhesive backed slidey tape. It, it has a, an alphabet name that somebody would know, but it's slidey tape and it's super slidey. But the big thing is, is it's three hundredths of an inch. It's actually 35 thousandths of an inch. So it takes up barely any space, still slides really nice. So after going around the country with the last set, I decided I was really going to start making some truck drawers. I just love that tape and how much space we can save and use now. So I gave those drawers away to a neighbor and then I made, this is version one here on the CNC. Turned out pretty nicely. This is version two. Versions three and four are in my other Tundra because everyone needs two Tundras. Version five is with my neighbor. One of my problems when I had a long bed truck and I made drawers that were the full length of the truck was a lot of times you either have a trailer right here, garage door, parking garage wall, another car in a parking lot, and it can't get to your stuff in the front. So I've gone with these 60 inch drawers more or less. This is for a generation one Tundra and I'll show you, I'll take you up to the new ones and show you how I did it. I have not put these tops on yet. That's part of what we're doing today. So you can see this top's kind of tight. This main drawer here is supposed to have a nice fit. Here's the drawer inside of the box with the top off. That bed is 76 inches long, I think. So it's just over six foot long. And this is how I prefer to handle a little bit of a longer bed. 60 inch drawer box, our effective length inside is 57 inches, 57 and an eighth, long enough to fit a Pelican or Harbor Freight style uh, gun box. Or, you know, you can get one, one of those gun boxes in here. This drawer system here is 10 inches tall on the exterior. And that means the interior then, your interior clearance is just right at eight and a half inches. Let's say right under eight, eight and a half inches, depending on which plywood you use or however. So 10 inches outside, eight and a half inside, really trying to maximize space. The very front, what I have are these boxes here. These work really good with wind doors. And what I do, so this is a separate box at the front. And what I do with wind doors, it's real easy to get in. You can open your window or side of your topper, reach in and pull this up. Otherwise you have to climb in and you just pull this up. It just has a loose tab fit. So it drops on and off real nice, real easy. But the idea here is chains, winter gear. Like, you know, if you carry a blanket, peanut butter, a little bit of water, whatever you need for winter emergencies, or you carry your truck chains, or what I've used them for in the past is my high lift. Basically anything that's relatively heavy that I don't want to get to. I don't necessarily want my chains in my drawer, but where else do I put them, right? So with this box here, I can keep my chains in here. You know, if you run around the desert, you know, you should have your chains all year round. So I carry big, heavy chains up here. Also what I've done in the past, since I don't like using a high lift, you have to have a high lift. And sometimes it's all, it's the only tool that will work. But if you've used a high lift a lot, you know, there's a reason they're called widow makers damn things are dangerous. So I actually put my high lift where it's hard to get to. I try to, I will rather dig than I would use my high lift. So the shovel's easy to get to. The high lift I'll actually put in this front box. This is where I carried it for years in this truck with my other box. So you can see these are two separate boxes. But what you can do in case something like a high lift, if you wanna put it up here or something longer, a pull palace is another great spot for a pull pal. So that can go right in here. And all you do is you just cut a relief right here, wherever you want it and then you can set your tool in here. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you is how we put these drawers together. The idea is we would mark where we're gonna put our bolt and then we would drill through these one side at a time. And then we would just use a T-nut between the two of them. Only need a couple of them to hold these drawers together. The reason the cutouts in the front of the drawer, sometimes I call it the back, just bear with me. It's because I'm always working right here, but that's the front of the truck. So those holes up there are real big and the idea is 
you can get a wrench or a drill through if you needed to. So these rows here, essentially these lower ones, are to bolt the two boxes together. Top row here is spaced for l track or logistical track from an airplane. I should probably go show you some. The idea being you could put some l track down the side of the drawer here and every four inches you have a mounting hole. Drill out the holes you want to use. You'd put a T-nut in from the back and then screw it in. The other thing this allows you to do is put mounting ties on the outside. So right now I'm going to get these two bolted together and then I'm going to put some mounting points on the outside so we can strap it into the truck or strap stuff to it. I like these big D-rings because they don't fold up your straps. You'll also notice that there's mounting holes on the front of the box and they correspond to these holes inside the front box. All right, so now you can see all of these holes. They're not drilled. We need to mark them and then drill them on each piece where we want to get our bolts through. Now on the front, you know, I could bolt this thing all crazy. These holes are not so you put 32 bolts between the two boxes. It only takes a couple. You could bolt these together any way you want. How I'm going to do it, and there's a specific reason for this, is I'm going to put a couple bolts between the main box here and the rear box, hold these together as a unit. But I am not going to put a bolt back here, even though I can get to it. But I'm going to bolt it together right here. The reason I like these independent drawers and why I'm going to bolt them together the way I am is now I can take one set out of the truck, have this set in, gun, camping gear, mountain bike gear, whatever. And then on this side, I could put my big Yeti cooler. Because once you get into those big 150 Yetis, it's real hard to get them on top of the drawer and still get in them. So I'll just, if I'm going hunting or we're going on a big trip where I need a cooler, I'll just take out one side and I'll put in my Yeti. If I really wanted to, what I could do is I could then stack these two boxes, one on top of the other. Sorry, I'm trying to load all these together. So I could stack the boxes one on top of the other, still have all my storage and have this side open. A lot of flexibility. The way these holes are set up, they're a double layer hole. The first layer is deep enough to hide the T-nut. As you can see, I'll put this T-nut in here. So that hides the T-nut and the head of the bolt. So that way we don't get in the way of our screw of our slide here. I think it's 15 thousandths here, right up against the veneer. That's all we have to drill out. So what I'm gonna do this first one. Take your, your bolt and your T-nut. T-nut goes in here. Bolt comes in here. You don't have to do it at this step. The reason I'm doing it right now without the top on is I'm gonna have to come back later and put the top on these two, but it makes it real easy to drill these out and get everything mounted where I want. So the next thing I come around and do is install some T-nuts on the inside here on this outer rail of the box. And that's so I can put some tie downs. However you wanna get it, we're trying to keep it as modular as possible. You can come back and do this later. You know, the other nice thing about these drawers, the plywood. You can screw anything you want to them. It's three quarter inch plywood, like do what you want, man. When we went around the country this year, we had our drawers in our truck and I knew that we were gonna take our orange water container, our big Coleman water container, and our cooler, dog box, barbecue, all that stuff rode on top of the truck box and I knew I wasn't gonna be moving them around, right? What I did is I just, built some rigging and just bolted it to the top of my box. Just came along a screw, screwed it to the top of the box. That way for our trip this summer, you know, we're not taking stuff in and out of the truck a lot. It rides in the back of the truck to be used from there. And uh, you know, you get to the beach, try something out, whatever. Anyway, so I just bolted everything to it. We got home. I took all those pieces off. They were scrap plywood and D rings and stuff. I took all that stuff off and just had my truck box. This is the top. I worked really hard. So there's no screw holes in top, in the top at all. Now this top's pre-finished, so super slippery. What I would do is just go to your local farm supply, get some rubber matting and glue it on. But all this does, is just notches in, just like that. Okay, so once we get this in, now I can screw it together. Let me go do that real quick. So all these holes in the side are pre-drilled. These screws are gonna pull the box together, but what I really am aiming here for is to get it pushed down nice and flat. Here's another view of these little front boxes. I made the gaps here really wide so it just drops on and off. It does give it 
kind of a loose fit on there, but it stays down nice and flat so you can slide things from the top box, from the front box all the way forward and not have it catch on a, on a lip. Real easy to remove. I've done this before with hinges. It's a pain in the butt. The other thing is, is no matter which way you put your hinge on, that's how you're going to want to get in the box. I guarantee it. I've done them where the hinge, where you're hinged and it opens up like this up against the bulkhead or the front of the tailgate or the front of the truck box. But without fail, it either doesn't hold. It's just always in the way. I thought about putting them so you could access from the side. So when you come in from your, come in from your wind door, you can pull this up and it'd be on a hinge. But honestly, it's just easier. Get it out of your way. Get to what you want. Put this back in. So that one goes. Hey, little jumping spider. This one goes all the way to the front. There's a better view of the back of the box here. So you can reach in and put any affixing points you want. It also allows a little bit of air because we have such a tight fit on our box, it allows a little bit of air to get out. Here are the two boxes ready to install. I just wanted to show you why I like this two box design. Number one is when you take the box out, one box out entirely. So not super convenient, but you know, not so bad. So I can take one box out and have space for my cooler or assuming I have some connection points here on the side, I can stack them up like this. So normally I have them both flat, but if I need to get something bigger and it's not real hard for me to take one out, put it to the side, and now we can put whatever we need on the side here. So yesterday we went to the, uh, we went and got compost. I have a topper, so we just used a bunch of garbage cans and uh, other big buckets. So we did is we just took this off, took one off, put it to the side. We had this whole other side here to slide buckets in. My box is now all bolted together. It moves as one piece. It is not bolted into the truck bed. Uh, one of the reasons I did this lower line here, right here, well, so it was real easy to put a piece of angle iron or whatever into your truck bed. You know, I used to spend so much time on, if you saw, this truck is littered with L-Track. There's L-Track all over on the inside of this truck bed to mount stuff. I used to be really big into locking everything down tight. Still am. I like all my stuff secure. I don't want to pile of crap when I get home. But these drawers, I don't even screw them down anymore. I used to have mounts on the sides. I used to try to drill through the bottom or catch a truck bed bolt but anymore I just put them in and I just let them run around back here so that's up to you if you want to strap them down the other thing is with these side straps it's real easy to to strap them down into your truck bed I like to pull them in and out utility wise I like to stack one on top of the other and so I haven't gotten real crazy so this is what I call my utility drawer You just slide in, super easy, simple handle. We're just trying to keep all this as simple as we can. <laughs> this, you know, I don't have a stop on there, but it rests on the tailgate. That's almost full extension. This is the back of the drawer box right here. So nice full extension. This is the utility box, you know, and I'm still perfecting all these, but essentially, and you have your movable drawer dividers. And so they plug in here and here, wherever you want them. I have the first one kind of tied in and the back one is also kind of tied in. When I say tight, it's up, it's closer, tighter gap to the ends. And that's so you can stuff some stuff right at the end, whether your tool roll goes back here where you're, you know, you just never get to it. Um, other than that, the adjustments are a little bit wider for these middle drawer boxes real nice workspace and then it's just the right length so when you turn it around it fits in there kind of snug but now you can put your stuff on top of it you ever need it one of the reasons i like this this design with the sliding top this utility design is if you have a shorter truck with one of those micro beds like my other tundra um, with a five foot bed or whatever 65 inch bed um, you can't sleep in it but if i have one of these i just pull my drawer out 
and now I can, and I put this on here, your head or feet, whatever, go here. I don't have to worry about that short bed with some part of my body hanging off the end here. With those five foot beds, I, you know, I buy a lot of sheet goods, so I'm buying four by eight sheet material. If it's night, if it's thinner or it's real expensive, I don't want to hang it off the end here and just kind of bump it up and down on the highway. What I used to do is whenever I bought sheet goods, I'd buy some two by fours, put them in here, set my sheet goods on top of that, and that way they were supported the full eight feet. What I do now is I just pull my drawers out and I set my material on top and I run a strap through this handle, through this handle here, all the way through the other side. And then I take it over my sheet goods and I clamp it all together. Now my sheet goods end up dropping, you know, this three quarters of an inch here, but my drawer goes up a little bit, but that way I'm able to squeeze everything together, put a little pinch right here. Haven't had any problems that way, but that's the whole reason these little handles make it easy to carry the drawer box around. But the main reason is so I can strap stuff to it like a big hug. I can always strap stuff to the side of the box as well. This is my favorite design here. This is a swoopy drawer box. The reason I like this is I carry everything in these bus tubs. So this allows me to reach in and grab my bus tub real easy and pull it out. And the reason I use bus tubs is there are those times, even with these shorter drawers, where I can only pull it out, whether I have my bike rack or my trailer or I'm in a parking garage, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm also one of those dudes who likes to back into parking spots. So a lot of times the other car is right here. So what I do is I have these bus tubs and that way if I do get in a short situation, I can pull one out, grab the other one, pull it out. It also makes it real easy. So if you have a camping one, you can keep it in the garage, however, however you want to do it. This is a hybrid between a full swoopy and a utility drawer because it still has two dividers and a small flat area just big enough really so you can use this to put your feet on when you're sleeping also it does make kind of a nice work area you have all your stuff right here this is your drawer front and it just indexes why do i never have anything ready and this just indexes using five quarter inch wood dowels so let's take these wood dowels these other holes here are all for um, screws that are recessed from the back you just put this together like this once again you don't need glue i'd probably glue them uh but the whole thing's designed there. so there's the front i could screw it on there's the drawer system The drawers we took out of the first generation Tundra, the ones we took out were versions one and two on the CNC. These are versions three and four. As you can see I'm kind of playing with a similar motif here. These are not bolted together. They're just me working on versions. So the ones we just assembled are version six, at least. So how we slide these is on these little strips of plastic right here. So you can see these little strips right here. That's how these drawers slide. This side over here, camping chairs, winter blanket. And then I have two full sets of chains in here. So one of these, and these are for big tires. So these are for 33, almost 34 by 11 inch tires. And uh, these are V-bar. So uh, big heavy duty V-bar chains, like the real deal, super heavy. Just wanted to show you this works pretty nice you now the other thing i like about these over your typical drawer slide besides all the space it saves is a little bit of friction in your drawer is not a bad thing so one of the problems you have with really really how does that one of the problems you have with really really um how do i want to say slidey drawer slides you know the ones that come in and out real nice the main problem is if you ever get on a hill and you need to get to your stuff well, the drawer's always sliding all the way open. And so now you got to figure out a way to hold it in position. Or worse yet, you're pointed downhill. And I'm, I'm used to these situations from being off-road or hunting or wherever. But something happens, you're stuck downhill, you need your tools, and you're pulling the drawer out, and it's trying to go back in. So these pull, these slide okay. They're a pretty nice slide, but it's not like, it's not boom, 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 boom. So I've had these on hills and stuff, and you can pull them out. And if it's not too extreme, they stay just nice.
So the first thing I need to do is weigh these drawers. I've made other drawers out of radiatus, AC plywood, uh, gosh, anything you could think of, good Baltic birch. This set here is made out of pre-finished Home Depot birch. It's not Baltic, it's domestic birch, I believe. Radiata drawers have been pretty light, I felt, for the amount of utility you get. The weight's not too bad. These ones have been a little bit heavier. I am gonna weigh them with all their accoutrement. First thing we have to do is weigh me. So as I stand here today, I am 231 pounds. So let me write that down because I will forget. We're gonna cover this later, but each box is 60 inches long, 24 and a half inches wide. So we're getting a little bit of space, uh, more space than you get out of a standard sheet of plywood. So if you did just one piece, you know, real easy out of a sheet of plywood. So we're getting a little bit more space to fill those wheel wells. Well, let's say 270. So 39 pounds for this drawer box, 31 pounds, 51 pounds. Our little box here, this is my front box, 16 pounds. Yeah, I feel like 16 pounds, feels better than that. We've done our weights, like I said, this pre-finished uh, birch is really pretty heavy. In fact, I'll tell you how much heavier it is. Hey, this birch, you know, these, these drawers take three full sheets of three quarter inch plywood. And this is my handy dandy little chart here. So you can see that the white birch finished from Home Depot is 68 pounds. It's actually on the lighter side. And then the radiata pine is 57. So total we're at 204 pounds on the drawer boxes, which a little bit heavier than I wanted. I wanted to stick around that 170 mark, but you know, really it's a truck and a little bit of weight in the back is good. This is my first quote unquote product I've ever really designed. Like I said, I've been using it for years. I've been around the competition. People tell you product development's hard, and it's crazy. I could do iterations and variations of this for the rest of my life and never feel like I have it quite perfect. Well, thank you very much for following along as we talk about our truck drawers. You know, for me, these aren't, like I said, these aren't gun drawers. They're not overlanding drawers. These are just lifestyle drawers. If you want a nice organized truck bed and you want to be able to get to your stuff no matter what it is, these are a wonderful solution. Uh, you know, we put groceries in here. You have the dog running around, dogs in the dog box or running around the back of the truck here. Um, you know, you have a lot of soft goods. You keep your heavy stuff down low or just get in and get out without having to unload the truck. Like everyday stuff. Like this was, we went to a, one of those giant municipal soccer fields the other day for my son's soccer. And uh, you know, all of a sudden you know, it's like, wait, do we have chairs? Well, sure, we have chairs, they're in the drawer. And sun got cold, I ran up and grabbed, we carry a wool blanket, it's in there. This stuff just rides around with us all the time. Wanted cocoa? I can make cocoa. Drop of a hat, just got water, we have our boiler, I carry cocoa with me, coffee, tea, whatever. You know, just, just kind of a lifestyle drawer system. Uh, this system right here, once again, is specialized for these truck beds that are longer than the new micro five foot truck beds with that separate front box. So all in with almost no waste cutting on a CNC. This is five sheets of plywood. We have three sheets of 18 millimeter, three quarter, um, which is the top, sides, drawer sides, drawer front and back, and then two complete sheets of half inch, 12 millimeter. In this case, we used this domestic birch. The half inch is all of our dividers, and then the drawer bottom, and the box bottom, trying to save a little bit of space, a little bit of weight there. We don't need three quarter on the bottom. Please copy the design, but if you do copy the design, share, man, share in the comments, send me a picture, whatever. I wanna see what you come up with. I think these are just, just the coolest thing. Thank you so much.